All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar series, Cube.Live. And with this month, we're actually celebrating the first anniversary of Cube.Live. For the last 12 months, we have been bringing content around Kubernetes to help you learn the emerging distributed computing platform around containers. And as we move forward, we are going to bring you more advanced concepts and also some of the most emerging trends from the Kubernetes ecosystem. So this month, I'm very excited to bring a very useful scenario and more realistic scenario used in production environments on build CI/CD pipelines with Jenkins and Kubernetes. So we are moving away from the foundations and basics to slightly more advanced concepts. So let's get started. I have an exciting lineup of demos. Hopefully by end of this session, you will learn how to connect the dots between GitHub, Jenkins, and Kubernetes and create an automated build pipeline uh, based on these three uh, services. So I'm going to briefly introduce the CI CD paradigm, which has been around for a while, which is becoming the key aspect of DevOps. Then we will recap the deployment features of Kubernetes. This session is not about covering the deployment capabilities. We did that earlier on a of, uh, through a dedicated session, so you can go back and look at that. But I'm going to do a quick recap because these features make integration with Jenkins very powerful. Then we will take a closer look at configuring GitHub, configuring Jenkins, and then finally building an integrated pipeline. The outcome of this session is to achieve one simple thing. The moment you commit code to GitHub, it should show up in Kubernetes deployment in the browser. So it's going to be magical, but uh, we'll demystify the technologies that make that happen. So what exactly is continuous integration and continuous deployment? This is almost a buzzword in the industry. It's very common to hear CI, CD interchangeably with DevOps, but DevOps is much beyond CI, CD. It also includes continuous testing, continuous monitoring, continuous delivery, and so on. But uh, certainly the key aspect of DevOps is CI, CD. So it's essentially a development methodology of uh, integrating the, the code to deliver automated builds. Normally when we write code, we compile it and then we get a binary or an artifact and then we move, move it to a runtime environment where we run it. But in a very complex distributed environment where you have multiple developers writing code, maybe in a very disparate locations spread geographically, uh, creating an integrated build is going to be a pretty complex and cumbersome task. So to facilitate that, we have the CI CD capabilities that basically take the source code coming out of the source code repository, uh, connecting that with a robust build system. And from there, it goes to a testing environment. And from there, it goes to staging where someone will manually approve the build and then it makes it to the production. So automating this entire process is basically called as the CI CD paradigm. It encourages hands-free automated deployments uh, where every commit results in a new build. So it, it consolidates, it aggregates the code coming from multiple developers, multiple branches, multiple uh, languages. With microservices, it is becoming more and more important because your build system should be polyglot and it should support multiple runtimes, frameworks, languages, compilers, and so on. So the, the CI CD pipeline will automate all of that and delivers a hands-free automated deployment paradigm. It, it enables try fast and fail fast concept because you, you would want to find the challenges and the problems in integrating code very early in the cycle than waiting for a complex smoke test to finish. So the moment the code is checked in and committed, uh, you need to kick off a build and find if there are any errors. Uh, if there are no errors, move it to a UAT and then uh, a, a functional test and a UX test. And finally, when it, when it gets approved, you, you promote, you graduate that build to production environment. So uh, finding faults and finding issues very early in the cycle is one of the advantage of using, uh, one of the advantages of using continuous integration and continuous deployment. So this is how a CI CD pipeline would look like. 
So there is a, a dev environment, then it goes to application test environment, and then there is an integration test, and finally there is an acceptance test, and there uh, someone in the QA team will create a manual trigger which will move it to the production. But in uh, most of the cases when testing is also automated, you don't even need that. Essentially there is an automated pipeline that takes your build, takes your code and moves it across multiple environments, multiple stages, finally to make it into the production environment. So this is uh, the, the best practice in software development lifecycle, closely tied to the agile development uh, pattern and the DevOps paradigm. So containers have uh, revolutionized the CI CD pipelines because containers are becoming the de facto artifacts. Normally in the pre-container era, you needed a build system to let's say take Java code, compile, it that, compile that into a var file or a jar file or um, any, of the, uh, any of the other uh, binaries, you know, even, even something like uh, .NET. And then uh, you basically take the binary output and, and then uh, deploy it in the production environment or the uh, target runtime. Uh, but there are multiple environments, multiple challenges and portability of code is very important and containers have become like the de facto packaging format even if you are packaging a var file or a jar file or a DLL or for that matter even a minified Node.js code, Docker is becoming the container, the, the boundary for logically packaging these artifacts and the outcome of a build process. So when that is integrated with CI CD, it basically puts that on steroids because irrespective of uh, where you are going to deploy, you will always end up generating a standard containerized image that can live in a container registry and get pulled by a container platform uh, when it is required. Uh, and, and because containers are much more smaller and much more agile than VMs, it makes a lot of sense for the code to be packaged and deployed as containers. And, and even if the customers are not running their applications in containers in production, what's interesting is most of the dev test and staging environments have already migrated to using containers uh, because there are some challenges still uh, with enterprise applications packaged and deployed as containers in production environments. But today, majority of the dev test environments have started embracing containers and, and using Docker as the default, de facto platform for uh, running the code. So when you bring that to CI CD, it just becomes very powerful because um, you, you take code, you package it into a Docker image, you push it to a registry and then you distribute it from the registry to multiple target environments. Uh, so this is becoming a very smooth streamlined way of uh, shipping code. Now Kubernetes is also very well aligned with this paradigm uh, because for CI CD you need a lot of automation, a lot of API enablement and uh, fortunately Kubernetes comes with a fantastic API first design so you can, you can always talk to the API endpoint to automate a lot of things. If you can do anything from CLI, you can always do it from API. So if you find limitations with uh, kubectl and you want to really go beyond that and do some very high-end automation, you can always consume the API because Kubernetes is one of the platforms with API first design. And of course, it comes with a very powerful uh, kubectl CLI and that can be integrated with your shell scripts and, and your uh, PowerShell scripts for automation. Uh, Kubernetes is also well suited for CI CD because it has pass like capabilities. Now when I say pass like capabilities, what I mean is you can uh, almost push an image and automatically have all your uh, replication controllers get upgraded. And you can uh, also decide the strategy for upgrading your deployment, you know, whether you want a rolling upgrade, whether you want a canary kind uh, deployment or you want to perform a blue green deployment, you can do all of that just from the command line. Uh, the commands that you see here, for example, kubectl set image deployment uh, is, is very powerful because at runtime you can essentially upgrade a set of pods or uh, replication controllers 
to a brand new image that's just been pushed into the uh, registry. It could be private registry, it could be Docker Hub, but uh, Kubernetes will pick up the latest image and will perform uh, a strategic rollout based on your policy. And after that, you can also look at the history of deployment. For example, uh, what is the version and how many iterations have you gone through deploying this app? And if you if you want, you can also roll back. Uh, for example, this command called kubectl rollout undo deploy uh, will take you back to the previous deployment. And this is almost like the way you deal with uh, a pass environment like Heroku or Cloud Foundry or OpenShift. Uh, and in fact, OpenShift is based on Kubernetes, though it is a pass. Uh, so combining these capabilities with CI CD pipeline will give you a lot of power and a lot of flexibility in managing your deployments targeting um, Kubernetes. Then what is Jenkins? Uh, of course, Jenkins is extremely powerful and very popular in the ecosystem, uh, particularly in the DevOps community. It's an open source CI tool written in Java with continuous integration in mind. Uh, it is one of the most preferred open source uh, platform for enabling CI CD. Of course, there are other alternatives, but Jenkins is by far the most popular among the open source ecosystem. It, it thoroughly integrates with source code control system from GitHub to GitLab to Bitbucket to whatnot. Um, so it's very easy for you to connect your source code control with Jenkins. So essentially, Jenkins is the um, build automation platform. So you want to compile like a million lines of Java code and generate a jar file you can take help of Jenkins as a centralized build platform to do that. Or you want to integrate uh, multiple branches and eventually uh, generate a Docker image. Again, you can take help of Jenkins and you can create a very complex yet uh, simplified pipeline to deliver the artifacts to your uh, artifact repository or uh, an image registry. It integrates very well with uh, testing tools like Selenium and other automated testing tools. Um, provisioning tools like uh, AWS, CLI, CloudFormation, Azure Resource Manager, even uh, Google Cloud uh, uh, Platform, Google Container Engine, uh, Azure Resource Manager. So all of those are very easily available as plugins. You can also perform configuration management. So if you want to run an Ansible playbook or a Chef cookbook, you can pretty much do that right within Jenkins build uh, process. And uh, there are a variety of deployment targets. Uh, essentially every deployment target, you know, for example, AWS or Azure or GCP or DistroOcean or any of these can be very easily integrated with Jenkins and most of them have plugins that you can install and start uh, configuring. So uh, not everything need to be hand waved or hand crafted into Jenkins. You can take advantage of the uh, plugins that are available in the ecosystem. So that is Jenkins. Now, um, it's time for me to jump into the live demo. I'm really looking forward to this. I had lots of fun building it and I hope you'll have as much fun as I had um, looking at this demo. And I'll try to um, share these steps as much as possible. I have promised even for my earlier webinars, I'm finding uh, it, it, it a challenge to get the articles out, but I promise for every webinar, you will find a corresponding article. Uh, most possibly on the news tank and I'm going to put up the link on the YouTube video. So stay tuned for that. For now, let me jump into the demo and walk you through the exciting um, process of building a CI/CD pipeline with Docker, Jenkins and Kubernetes. All right, so a little bit of uh, background and the environment. So what I have here is a Kubernetes cluster running in my favorite cloud platform, which is Google cloud platform. It's GKE running three nodes in Asia East one. And I also have my Jenkins instance running in the same region in a Ubuntu 14.04 VM. Uh, so I'm going to basically uh, take this Jenkins box and uh, integrate that with uh, this Kubernetes cluster. So, so that is my basic setup. Um, so let's move to the command line and explore the environment a little bit more. So kubectl get nodes will show me that I have uh, three nodes configured in GKE. And uh, the goal of this demo is to start with the source code, but go all the way up to the deployment uh, through Jenkins and Kubernetes. So for that, we need to um, first grab the GitHub repo. So here I have a very simple Dockerized app. The goal is not to overwhelm you with complex 
microservices application. It doesn't technically matter. It could be um, just a container. So I'm going to, uh, you know, take uh, this specific app, which, which is already on on my um, GitHub repo. It's open. It's public, so you can actually repeat most of these steps. So currently, uh, I don't have anything. So I'm going to first start by cloning this uh, repo called Hello Will, and it is a very simple nginx based image. So that's the very first step. So now I have this uh, directory called Hello Whale, where you will see I have uh, a simple Docker file and um, uh, HTML, a static HTML file with an Nginx uh, bootstrapping shell script. So pretty straightforward. And uh, what I'm going to do now is to basically follow these steps. You know, I'm going to build um, the image from the Docker file. Uh, and the source code that I have here. So this is going to quickly uh, build a Docker image. So if I actually look at Docker images, you'll notice that I have uh, an image called Hello Whale. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to test it locally. I want to make sure everything is running well. So I'm going to launch this locally and open the browser, uh, hit localhost um, uh, 80. I don't need to put any port here. And we'll see hello container. So it's a pretty straightforward Nginx container, nothing fancy. So this is working. So that means my Docker image is perfectly running. Uh, so with that in place, let me now target um, Kubernetes. But before that, I need to tag this with uh, my own uh, Docker Hub username. So I have done that. And then I'm going to log in to Docker Hub. Uh, don't try to uh, login with uh, these these credentials. It is a very temporary thing. I'm going to change that. So that is my um, Docker Hub uh, push command. So this is going to basically push my uh, image from my local machine into Docker Hub. It just takes a few seconds. And uh, now what I have basically done is grab the source code, package it as a Docker image and push it to the Docker Hub. And, and now I'm going to test it by running it on a Kubernetes cluster because we want to have the baseline setup on Kubernetes. So let me uh, create a deployment. So I'm not going to use any YAML file. I'm going to run this command. If you actually look at this, um, it, is, uh, it is going to be a very simple deployment. So we are uh, uh, launching this image called hello whale on kubernetes so now this is created so get deployments will show us there is hello whale and let's see if the pods are getting scheduled so there we go the pod is also in place uh, but to actually access this we need to of course expose it so again i'm going to use the uh, kubectl expose command to take this deployment called hello whale and expose it to a load balancer that's because eventually if I uh, create uh, more replicas of this, it's easy for me to access them. And since I'm in the public cloud, I might as well take advantage of the load balancer type. So this is going to take uh, a little longer uh, than creating a simple node port. So if you now look at the services, we have the hello whale service. Uh, the external IP is pending because the load balancer is going to get uh, provisioned by GCP. So if we refresh, this is going to show up in a second. And, and there we go. So this is the load balancer to which our pods are going to be associated, but it will take uh, slightly more longer to assign the IP address. Uh, so let's not wait for that uh, because that will anyway show up. And uh, if we hit the load balancer IP, we should be able to see the hello containers um, application in the browser. So this is, this is perfectly fine. You know, we have not touched anything to do with Jenkins not touched anything to do with uh, CI CD, but we have done the groundwork to get started with it. So what are the next steps? Well, um, the first thing that I'm going to do is configure Jenkins. And even if you're not familiar with Jenkins, you will find this uh, pretty easy to follow. So this is a plain vanilla Jenkins installation running on an Ubuntu VM in uh, GCE. So there are no projects, there are no build um, projects that I'm, I'm, I'm going to kick off. I'm going to create one at this point. So the very first thing that we need to do is click on manage Jenkins and do some basic housekeeping. So 
what we'll actually do is we'll click on configure system and because I'm not using a static IP address I need to make sure that uh, Jenkins is actually available on the exact IP address so I need to do a few things here so the first thing is I'll add docker hub credentials as my uh, environment variable so that it is available to my build job eventually when I create it and then if you notice this is very different from my actual Jenkins IP address shown by compute engine so I'm going to grab this public IP address we need this and update my Jenkins IP address there and uh, we also need to do one more thing uh, we have to basically uh, create what is called as the webhook for github integration because eventually this is where github will end up talking to so we are establishing a link between github and jenkins by um, by explicitly mentioning this link so github will eventually come back and ping jenkins on this uh, endpoint so we are creating that so um, that's about it we don't need to change anything else uh, just to show you we are now configuring our docker hub credentials as a as a Jenkins uh, environment variable and then we are making sure that the URL is up to date and we also configured the webhook that our github repos can talk to um, Jenkins through so that's all we need to uh, configure so that is done so now Jenkins is perfectly set up though we don't have any jobs yet uh, it is ready for uh, uh, for kicking off the build uh, jobs so now uh, we have this in place so let's make sure that the uh, webhook uh, is available to us so I'm going to click on github servers and then go to advanced and grab this URL this is essential for us to configure github so now that Jenkins is configured and Jenkins is uh, in place let's move to github so this is my github repo where I have pulled the hello will app uh, from so all I need to do is uh, make sure that github is able to talk to Jenkins so here I click on settings I go to integration and services click on add service look up for Jenkins github plugin and uh, now we are going to okay I need to log into my last pass and make sure I'm able to okay give me a second while I finish this housekeeping stuff ah this is frustrating okay I have a pretty cryptic password sometimes oops one more time okay so now uh, github has authenticated me and it is going to ask me for the Jenkins hook URL all we need to do is grab that URL uh, that we configured in Jenkins and pass it on to github so this is the link between github and Jenkins so this will basically make sure that when you commit code uh, to github it can send that trigger to Jenkins and it can kick off a build job so so that is the basic step that we have achieved so now uh, we have basically connected github to Jenkins and Jenkins is perfectly configured so it's time for us to really create our first job and and in that process we'll actually uh, grab the code compile it compile it as in uh, dockerize it you know build a docker image push it to docker registry and then update uh, kubernetes so we have multiple things to do so let's get started so I'm going to click on create new jobs and we'll choose a freestyle project so let me call this hello whale right so uh, it's a freestyle project because we are going to basically define everything by ourselves so um, once this project gets created we need to uh, populate a few things here so the first thing is the github project so what we're going to do is get this github URL um, of our repo grab this and put it here as the project URL and then we also need to configure source code management so the repository URL is obviously this uh, and 
okay so this is done and then uh, so so basically you know if i have moved too fast so i am associating this with a github project and then i am saying this is my source code management uh, and this is coming via the uh, github plugin so i am basically using that uh, to to configure additional things for example if i am using a private repo not, not the public repo i want to add my keys or i want to add my username and password uh, that is not required at this point because we are using a public repo but the github plugin will make it more secure and more easy for you to integrate with uh, your private repos so i am conveniently bypassing because we are hitting a public repo here and then comes the build trigger so you can you can basically trigger the build that is converting your source code into a docker image uh, through multiple triggers so one of those triggers is called github hook trigger so what this means is when you commit the code to a uh, github repo it does a callback via the webhook and that acts as a trigger and which will kick off the build process so that's what we are enabling here so github hook trigger for git scm polling you can also schedule uh, you can click on build periodically and give the same syntax uh, or the notation as the cron job so you can treat it like a cron job and you can define how often uh, 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 jenkins should kick off the build but that's not required we are going to do it every time we commit code so we leave that as it is so that's all this basically completes the the core integration of uh, github with uh, jenkins and then comes in what is called as the build step so you, you can actually run multiple things for example you can invoke ant you can invoke gradle depending on your target uh, environment you know for example java projects will make use of ant um, you know the other projects uh, like android if you are building apks you would uh, prefer gradle um, so we are going to use execute shell because uh, i'm not using any fancy plugins here you can actually use multiple plugins or even third party plugins to basically integrate docker but we are going to keep it simple uh, so i'm going to run the same commands that i would run in my command line to basically take the source code and create a docker image and then push it to the registry and then add another step which is to uh, if this is successful then go to the next step and and updating um, kubernetes so uh, we are going to perform a few steps here so here is the uh, four lines that i'm going to copy and paste right so what are we going to do here we basically define the image name as the hello whale and if you look at the build number it is the environment variable that jenkins will generate uh, for every successful build so we will uh, basically uh make sure that you know we are uh, tagging the image with the same build as jenkins and then we will build the image with the same tag name and then we'll log in i don't want to put the password in clear text so i am going to use the environment variable docker hub uh, which i have already created and then we'll finally do a docker push pretty straightforward before this your jenkins machine should have docker running otherwise your build will fail so to show you you know i am inside the vm that's running jenkins so here if you actually look at uh, my docker version you will notice it's running one of the older builds of uh, docker uh, but this is good enough so that's all i need to make sure before i run these commands so i'll grab this and paste it in this text box so what we are basically saying is as soon as the trigger comes from github immediately kick off this shell command right or commands so uh, this is the first step if this is successful we need to now push that to kubernetes so how do we do that well i'm going to add another uh, step and grab this command which is very straightforward right so okay if you can't see it here let me highlight it here so the image name is whatever we have pushed to the docker hub in the previous step and then we are taking advantage of kubernetes set image command which is almost like uh, you know refueling refueling the flight when it is in mid air so when our application is running um, in a kubernetes cluster with multiple replication controllers we are actually saying upgrade all of them with uh, this new image and immediately kubernetes will start a rollout 
and, and eventually you will see all the pods running this image that belong to the same deployment will get upgraded. So this is a very powerful step. So we'll now grab this and paste it here. So this completes our second step, which is Kubernetes updating. Now, apart from this, I don't need to do anything. The reason is by now our load balancer should be in place, right? And uh, it, it, it must have assumed a public IP address as well. So let's go ahead and check if our deployment is up and running. So this is our um, load balancer and this is the port. So let's grab this and run it. So it should show hello containers. Perfect. So that means the Kubernetes deployment is in place. Everything is set. We just need to keep upgrading every time we uh, create a new build. So that's it. So we are all set. Now I'm going to take a deep breath and hit on the save button. So this is going to you know, take us to the Jenkins homepage and everything is bright and sunny because we haven't we haven't built this. So this might become cloudy if our build fails. So one of the mechanisms to basically test this is to come back to um, GitHub, click on settings, go to your integrations and uh, click on a button. But sometimes I found that not working, but, but let's give it a chance. So I'm going to uh, go to this integration and this is where we linked uh, GitHub with Jenkins. I'm going to click on this test service button and this is going to send uh, a test trigger to Jenkins and if this works we should actually see the build getting kicked off and there we go. So now you'll actually see that hello whale build is happening so when we click on this it started by a GitHub push it is simulated and when we look at the console output it looks pretty interesting. In no time, um, in no time this has built the Docker image, right? But the step is not successful. That's because you must be logged into the server. So that means I, I am unable to talk to Kubernetes. That's exactly what this error means. And it is a pretty good mechanism for us to make sure that, um, you know, Jenkins is able to talk to Kubernetes. So now the build has failed technically and there you see some cloudy uh, icon with a red uh, uh, indicator but that's not a big problem for me looks like uh, my uh, jenkins server is not able to talk to the kubernetes cluster which is pretty pretty common uh, and and when this happens i need to do a few steps so basically i need to uh, move the config file so there is a config file here I need to move this to a few locations so I need to move this into home slash Jenkins dot cube so this is going to update my um, Kubernetes configuration. I also need to repeat this to make sure that this file is also available to Jenkins at uh, uh, var local. No, it is var lib Jenkins and the cube directory. So when this step is done, Kubernetes should be uh, Jenkins should uh, should be able to talk to Kubernetes. And uh, just to uh, make sure that it's going to pick up my latest configuration. I'm going to restart Jenkins. Okay, so this is live debugging and you will you'll also learn how to fix this when you encounter the same problem. And, and I'm doing this because it's not a recorded playback video. So this is a live demo and demos do fail. This is actually not a failure. It's a very tiny issue that I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to fix. So, um, Meanwhile, let's make sure we are still able to talk to Kubernetes. We are. Okay, so everything seems to be in place. And this time, when I kick off the build again, it should uh, go through. So let's give it another chance. Okay, so I'm going to do an on demand build. So let's say build now. And, and this is going to force Jenkins to initiate the build. So I go back to the command um, 
and the console output okay so hopefully and there we go I am so excited to see this okay so that means uh, if you actually notice it is success right that means uh, now Jenkins is able is able to pull the code from github and then push it to kubernetes via docker hub awesome so now let's go back to the project let's go back to the and the cloudiness has reduced which means uh, you know one failure and one success awesome that's not all now we have to really check the final test right so now what I'm going to do is if you actually look at uh, our our uh, container hello container code uh, the output you will actually notice that it's uh, it's showing some some text with blue color so what I'm going to do here is uh, do something visually appealing visually uh, obvious right so I'm going to pull up the index.html and I don't like blue color so I'm going to change the style sheet to red okay so I have modified this now I'm going to uh, do a git add followed by this file that we just modified git commit okay uh, changed color to red and now this is one file change it is done and I do a get push right so when I do a get push let's switch to the Jenkins window and keep an eye on this very soon you'll actually notice that it is kicking off the build process and there we go so now it is in the build queue it will move here in just a second and and then it will start executing the uh, build process and this is the third build so let's watch for the console output and there we go so now it's building the docker image and it has pushed the uh, image to kubernetes now let's take a deep breath hit refresh and they should become red there we go this is perfect this is my dream come true when I was actually testing this because from source code to kubernetes cluster in an automated fashion this is phenomenally powerful you know and I'm, I'm so much in love with kubectl deployment commands it is it is extremely powerful and if you're not convinced so let's uh, do it one more time because it is fun so I'm going to open uh, my editor again and this time hello kubernetes fans so I have changed the text and rinse and repeat so we're going to add this to the repo and we'll say change your text some arbitrary value here okay um, and finally get push and watch the magic so let's see um, if this is kicking off another build so it, there must be a four uh, iteration fourth iteration of the build showing up here it will take just a minute because it has to do a full round trip from my machine to github from there to Jenkins uh, and then all the way back to Kubernetes so it is going to be an interesting round trip so let's give it uh, a few seconds okay so now the fourth iteration is going through the build everything seems to be fine let's wait for kubectl to finish its job and now perfecto this is amazing right this is exactly what we wanted and with very little configuration and with very little process we could achieve what we want this is phenomenal and uh, I promise I'm going to document all of this and uh, share this with you now the best thing is this you can actually see how this shows up so when I come back to my command prompt and do kubectl rollout history you can actually figure out that we have done this multiple times we have done this four times which is actually matching um, the uh, uh, Jenkins history of course the first one was out of Jenkins so that's the reason why um, it is showing four so we, we actually the first build here failed but that is compensated by our manual uh, kubectl deployment so that was manual but after that two three and four were done by Jenkins and now if I want I can actually go back in time and and uh, uh, roll back my deployment but that's not the goal you know you can always do that using the kubectl uh, commands so 
uh, we are already running out of time. I am 10 minutes past the uh, deadline. So let me bring back the slides. And I want to announce something very interesting. So as I mentioned, after we finished our first anniversary, we are going to bring in subject matter experts from the Kubernetes ecosystem. And I'm very excited to announce uh, Adnan from Bitnami, who is working on Helm and Monocular to talk to us and demo how to use Helm with Kubernetes. That is going to be the next webinar on September 13th at 9 a.m. Pacific, 9.30 p.m. India Standard Time. So uh, as usual, kube.live will be updated uh, in a day or two, and you should be able to sign up for this uh, exciting webinar. And again, uh, before this weekend or over the weekend, I'll uh, upload the video to YouTube. And if you are uh, already subscribed to my channel, you will get a notification and you should be able to play back. And very soon, as soon as I find time, I will document all of this into a nice article, put it up on the news stack and update the YouTube link. So stay tuned and uh, thank you very much. It's time for me to take a look at the Q&A. Um, there are a lot of questions, but I don't have enough time to address them. But let me make sure I cover at least um, the most important ones. Okay, so how do you troubleshoot across different tools? Do you push all the logs into additional tools like Elk? Well, this is out of the scope of this webinar. Um, so stay tuned for monitoring and logging, which is a topic by itself. I'm going to cover that in the upcoming uh, webinar series. Um, but, but yes, uh, this is basically done by centralized logging. So there are multiple mechanisms for that. Um, are you going to cover Jenkins pipelines? Well, not. Actually, this is an introductory session. I haven't covered the Kubernetes plugin for uh, Jenkins. It's a very, very powerful mechanism to run Jenkins slave within Kubernetes environment. So instead of running um, the build job outside of Kubernetes, you can actually run it as a pod inside the Kubernetes cluster. And it is called the um, Jenkins slave uh, plugin. Uh, for you know, for Kubernetes. I'm going to cover that in, in the advanced session uh, in a couple of months from now. Stay tuned for that. Uh, and, and that's when I'm also going to cover the Jenkins pipelines and some of the advanced use cases of using CICD pipelines. Uh, can you cover unit and integration tests? Well, I'm not a tester, um, but I can definitely uh, onboard uh, one of the subject matter experts from the ecosystem and will be uh, we'll be glad to have them in the in the webinar series, so watch out for that. Okay, if kubectl. Okay, so so there is a concern. There's a question by someone that why are you hardwiring the the uh, the credentials? Well, I need not. You know, this is a demo, and I wanted to keep it very simple. I didn't want to confuse you with configuration, but ideally, the way you bring the credentials is by using the Docker plugin which comes with a predefined uh, secure mechanism to embed your Docker credentials, Docker Hub credentials. Same thing with uh, Kubernetes. There is a plugin where you can actually configure the Kubernetes uh, credentials like your, um, your certificates, the TLS endpoint, and some of the other parameters. So you need not really uh, use the, the rudimentary way of using config file. Uh, but I, again, that's not the goal of this webinar. I wanted to stay focused on the core aspect and not the configuration. Uh, all of them will be covered in the future webinars. Okay, so someone is asking me, why did I copy the file? Well, if you are familiar with kubectl, kubectl expects a file called .cube slash config in the home directory. So uh, because Jenkins is running as a user called Jenkins, I need to make sure that the config file is available to that user. So what I did is I copied it from my home directory to Jenkins home directory so that uh, Jenkins build job can discover the config file and can establish the connection with the Kubernetes master. Okay, so there is a question on, uh, do we need to run kubectl manually? And why, why do we need to do that if Jenkins is taking care of end to end? Well, you need not. Um, actually, you can leave everything to Kubernetes, but the idea is I wanted to show you the manual deployment and then building up with Jenkins on top of it. Uh, there is no hard and fast rule uh, in doing it. You could pretty much leave everything to Jenkins and it could be the um, 
the the initiator for your first deployment but i just wanted to demo that uh, we are building up a deployment and exposing it as a as a uh, load balancer endpoint so otherwise you can pretty much leave it to jenkins all right folks uh, that brings us to the end of this webinar um, thank you once again for your patronage and your participation in cube.live series we are committed to bringing you quality content i want you to take a very quick poll and tell us what you felt this is extremely important this will help me get better with the content so appreciate if you can take time and uh, participate in this only 50% of you have voted appreciate if everyone can participate in it this is very very important and valuable for us all right thank you i have just um, one more poll which directly reflects on my delivery skills and my content uh, skills so if you can take a second and tell me how you like this the overall quality thank you i couldn't have asked for a better feedback excellent thank you so much and uh, do stay tuned it's cube.live and my youtube channel where you can find these recordings so i will see you in the next webinar thank you and uh, have a wonderful week ahead